Rarely were we up all night fighting. The night I confronted Maze about what happened in the laundromat was one of those unfortunate occasions, because he denied it, denied seeing Kel at all, and tried to convince me that Bless was lying. I asked him why she would lie about it when she knew how important Kel was to me. He suggested she was out to break us up. I told him even if that were the case, she wouldn't have done it in such a devious, backhanded high school sort of way. Hell, we both knew she made no secret about it. Her desire to end us was on Front Street all the time. I was trying to keep cool with him, but how could I? He was lying. Why was he lying, though? I had expected and could have accepted any oversight in regards to the day in question. Perhaps he had run into her randomly and gave her some change and forgotten to tell me afterward. Or he had seen her on her way over to visit me and purposefully told her I wasn't around because he hadn't felt like inviting her up. Sadly, he made no such admission. Nervously in the painful silence between bouts of arguing, I found myself tracing one of the many scars and nicks on his arm, some of which had been self-inflicted. Maze had battled with the worst of men. He had been struck by tire irons and stabbed by blades. He had even cut into himself to divert his mind from various fallouts. I traced his scars with my eyes downcast. His eyes lay like a dog around my neck, then faded out and came back with great resurgence as he pulled away from me, defensively. It was ridiculous and unnecessary for him to be defensive when all I wanted to do was find my little sister. I couldn't listen to him talk shit about Bless anymore and question me for questioning him. Hours passed. I tried to let him talk and shut him out. I had to switch channels or I was going to fall apart. The playful place where we usually found common ground was barely a crawl space and closing rapidly. I had to do something, and fast. I pressed myself against him to stop him there at the impasse. The dream was ending and not. The dream was blending and hot, and finally we fell over one another into the cool belly of the bed without tension or thought. I love how the size of his forearms and wrists are twice mine, the thickness of his guns three times my arms. The only thing I seem to have equal to his may have been the size of my head. I guess I have a big head full of thoughts. I draped myself over him after we made it and dropped my chin over his collarbone, and together was our breathing. The sounds outside the windows came back to our stillness, all the clattering of city streets, truck beds over potholes, mufflers, pistons, belts, fans, people shouting out, kids, the wind playing the leaves on the trees, the birds, doors and locks and dogs and chains. Then we were silent and removed from it all, Nothing more could penetrate me, and so I fell asleep. He was awake and confused for some time. He wanted to be angry, but could not.